Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you are listening to and watching a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And joining me, as always, are my co-hosts, Rebellious D and Trav. How you fellas doing today? D got me, Ready to go, bro. man. He got you. Got you. Hey, got well, D, look, you're not the only uh, sharpshooter here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks today. Today, we are joined by voice actor Brian Overa. Brian, thank you for joining us here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for responding to me when I slid in your DMs. Hey, and hey. like everybody knows, that's what we do here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. We slide into the do. DMs and sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no, but most of the time they just leave us on red. So thank you, Brian, <laughs> for <laughs> responding hey, to the message. Hey, that, that's our business, man. You got to put that out there like that embarrass us. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> hey, no here, shame, at up, here at Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, man. We let everybody know what's Keep good. Keep it real, man. I guess. And hey. uh, before we get into today's review, I mean, not review, uh, we do so she many look videos. look at you. We do yeah. so many videos now, and it's like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> guy. it's like, D I get the AD, reviews like and the said, interviews mixed up. <laughs> but you called it every episode, bro. Yeah. Gotta hey, mess it up, man. Hey, yeah. but look, on today's interview, uh, before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to our channel, and you hit the bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. So with no further assistance or nothing else to say, let's go ahead and get into today's video and podcast video. Oh, God. Woo. No, I'm stumbling. Butchered it. Uh Podcast uh, in the description. I was about to say you didn't even give you didn't even give D an opportunity. To hey, was I was trying to pick him up. He didn't even... Hey, hey, hey! You were supposed to come in with the soft save, man. I could, man. Bro, you gave him no room. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, no space. Hey, well, I mean, well, D, you know, you used to just shooting, uh, shooting the shot, man. It's yeah, like man. I needed Trav to catch me. Yeah. It's nice. like Trav, Trav. I mean, Trav. I know you have the ear, so it's just like you already knew that I was, I was fumbling. So you should have, you should have put your hands out and caught your fellow man. That's all I'm saying. We could try it. We could try it. We tried. But uh, Brian, let's go ahead and get into it, man. All so right. what we ask everybody who joins us here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, we ask them, what is their origin story? Who is Brian Overa? Let us know. What's your origin story? Oh boy. Um, let's see. I was born in Santa Barbara, California. When I was a couple months old, um, my family decided to move to Dallas uh, due to work uh, reasons that, and, you know, the cost of living in LA. But, you mm -hmm. know, we got that. Um, first generation American, come from a nice. long line of, uh, of uh, Mexican immigrants, specifically from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Wow. Um, nice. So yeah, I'm on the the lighter the lighter side, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of us actually are, because um, we did our genealogy and it turns out, oh, Spain. I'm like, really? Couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, was going through my childhood. I was a hardcore tsunami kid. Um, you know, tsunami, Yu Gi Oh, the the, the you know the, the classics. That's right. That's right. Gundam yeah. Wing, Johnny Glass, Glass Voltron. So we, yeah, exactly. We got Roll that. The Warriors, you know, Big O. Hey. Big O. Big O, Big Outlaw o. Star. O. Hey, Outlaw, yep. everybody know Outlaw Star Outlaw top Star. five for uh, you. Uh, boy. Uh, yep. uh, hey, exactly. we had the classics on Toonami back in the day. Yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. So we got that. Um, I started really kind of getting into just most pop culture stuff when I was like in high school, especially like when Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon was the thing. Like I'm a hardcore Poke fan. Um, and then I went to college a couple years, didn't know what I wanted to do. I started, you know, doing some engineering stuff, some game development stuff. Like I really did not know what I wanted to do, uh, growing up. And I guess that's just kind of me saying, look, if you don't know what you want to do with your life right now, you got time. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't stumble into what I wanted to do until I was 24 years old. And that was when I decided to get into writing for film and television. Uh, and then I decided to take uh, a semester of acting just to kind of learn the vocabulary, learn the terminology, learn how to think like an actor, direct an actor. You know, uh, when you know the foundations and know who you're working with, I think that really helps out, especially in writing or, or directing. Um, now, this is the funny story about my voice acting origin. I was on Facebook and Todd Habercorn put out like an ad for like a local con he was doing in my in my 
hometown uh, hometown that I was growing up in in Irving, and I was like, I got nothing going on, so I decided to go. I signed up, went to the event, I got my ticket, went over there, and as I arrived, I uh, saw that they were going to do like a competition, like a like a ADR competition, and I was already wow. a semester deep, a semester deep into acting. <laughs> And I love my acting professor. Her name is uh, Gail Crownauer. She's been in a lot of stuff. And she's taught some of Funny's best. Nice. She's she's taught Laura Bailey. She's taught Sherry Lee. So, oh, you know, wow. she's nice taught some drop. big names. Yeah, nice exactly. Yeah. I, I, hey, I, I know how this works. Yeah. I know how this works. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I said, you know what? Let's see what happens. You know, I decided on a whim, on a whim. That's how my journey started. I'm like, let's see what a semester of acting gets me. So TLDR um, made it to the finals, didn't win. But this is how I met Morgan Berry, Mich uh, Marissa Lenti, and Don Bennett. Wow. That is that we all started around the same. We actually nice. met at that con. I think Morgan won that competition. And one of the judges happened to be Tyler Walker the uh adr director for fairy tale you know when i met i met tyler and i met todd sabbat and i met uh tyler's wife heather who uh does a lot of uh stuff for uh fairy uh for fairy tale and a lot of stuff for funimation and we just talked like the competition was over i was in like the top i i got i got my what, what do you call it the podium i made podium you uh -huh. know like it like nice. in a, like in a racing game i made podium that's all that yes. matters <laughs> you know? and uh we started talking i was telling them oh this is what i'm taking acting with this is what i'm into and you know just talking shop like we're doing now and then it was like a week later i got a phone call from tara um who was the talent coordinator for funimation it's like you know it's like hey uh you know this is tara from funimation uh one of our directors gave you your number and wanted to see if you wanted to come in an audition the rest was history after that. I was about to say, and then you said no, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's literally how it started on a whim. I was just like, let's let's see what happens. I had no expectations. I had no, like, this sounds weird, but I had no aspiration for it. Yeah. You know, uh, like, I just wanted to write mm -hmm. and direct for television and film because filmmaking is actually in our in our family blood on my mother's side, um, from my grandfather, uh, I, I have an obscure relative. You might know him, Guillermo del Toro. Oh, wow. He is a pretty obscure relative. Uh, like the connection, according to everyone in my family and some of the genealogy work I did, my grandfather and his father were cousins, and my mom used to actually watch him when he was younger. Nice. You're born to do oh, this. Yeah. So I and it's funny, it's some it's all in the family. Yeah. Oh. And what's funny, some people, if they pull up pictures of him and me, especially when I used to have facial hair, not anymore, uh -huh. we look actually relatively similar. Yeah, yeah. It just came on the screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's how I started, you know, and nice. the rest was history. And I just kept doing my best. You know, it went from fairy tale to let's see, I think it was fairy tale, world breaker, one piece. Then I got my first big name in Servamp. And then later on down the line, Dragon Ball, baby. Nice, nice. You know? I, I feel like, uh, you know, any, all right, like when it comes to wrestling, right? Because mm -hmm. I wrestle on the indies and I feel like everybody's goal is to eventually one day wrestle in WWE. <clears throat> um, you know, that's, it's, it's a dream that everybody has when they say that they, you know, if they want to be a wrestler, that that's one thing that they always you know, aspire to do. And I feel like mm -hmm. when it comes to voice acting, uh, you know, most of us like like you, you grew up watching Toonami and Dragon mm -hmm. Ball Z and another one like Pokemon, like those were like the big animes back in the day. So I always feel like it's it's cool when you get into this field and it's just like, man, I hope that I could do something in Dragon Ball, which thank God, yeah. thank <laughs> God Dragon Ball came back because if not, then, you know, mm -hmm. you never would have even had the opportunity. Now, Pokemon, on the other hand, you could, you could possibly have a chance of getting in Pokemon, but now with Dragon Ball super back, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that opportunity, I feel like anybody who grew up watching Dragon Ball is going to try to jump to, you know, be in that show. And mm -hmm. not only did you voice one character on Dragon Ball Super, you had the opportunity to voice two characters. So mm -hmm. I want to ask you, like, how did it feel when, mm -hmm. you know, you went into the audition and you landed the role? Well, the funny thing with these roles, because um, like I've 
audition for some of the bigger parts of the show. Um, it, you know, it, this was way back when the show was still under pre-production, like for the dubbing and everything. And, yeah. uh, you know, didn't get any callbacks, but I was being called in. Uh, and this was actually how I met Raleigh Pickens, who does a lot of the ADR direction. If Sabbath's not directing uh, mm -hmm. Dragon Ball, Raleigh is. Yeah. And, you know, that's how I got to meet Raleigh and I got to work with Raleigh. He brought me in and I got to, like, Grill was my first, uh, foot into the Dragon Ball universe. So yeah. that was that was cool. Not only did I get to voice Grill, but I got to voice in a tiny filler arc that brought yeah. in right, yeah, Drummond. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. the original Vegeta. Vegeta. Yeah, that was which awesome. Which was so uh, oh, nice. Like just it was it was so much fun and you know, working with Raleigh is always a treat. And then the funny thing with the Tournament of Power was there are so many named parts in the Tournament of Power. Mm -hmm. They basically said, this is an all-hands-on-deck thing. We're basically going to be using everybody. Nice. Because Tournament of Power, I think, is roughly about a roster of close to 70. It's like a Smash Brothers roster. It's a <laughs> bi it is a big roster. And um, what was funny is, I really hope, uh, this. this is cool for me to say this, but they made an actual roster sheet like when i got called in it's like hey you know the tournament power's coming up obviously we wanted to you know use you and they printed out a big roster sheet of everyone all the universes all the gods of destruction all the champions everything and it's yeah. in a nice laminate it's laminated all right wild <laughs> and then with a dry erase marker they've been marking off who's been cast who's uh -huh. who and raleigh just puts down the laminated sheet and circled a couple options that said pick one nice now did you know now let me ask you did you know who the characters were when you chose a little bit okay. um uh, and um it's it, like i kind of stopped with dragon ball for a while because when i got into college college work took a lot of my time and i kind of yeah. fell out of it but i like i like to pick if i had you know if not every day you can get a chance to just pick your mm -hmm. job like pick yeah. one <laughs> but this was just like me, I just wanted to go with what kind of, you know, clicked with me, you know, and I, I saw some pretty cool characters because there was a good chunk of the, of the roster was already cast. Yeah. Um, but then when I saw, and I guess a fun little, when I saw this boy, yeah, when boy. I saw when I saw nice. show sub, I was like, you know what? Let's do he looks Let's, cool. Yeah. yeah he looks, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. looks yeah. cool. He looks like fun. And I said, let's do that one. And that was when I found out that, uh, my character fights against Android 18 and Krillin. Mm -hmm. and right. Krillin is voiced by Sonny Strait, who yeah. I've taken classes. I've taken some of his classes. Oh, I've worked wow. with him. He was actually the, <clears throat> excuse me, the ADR director for Servamp. So I had oh, like a very, okay. in, I had a very intimate, like six, 12 weeks of working with him because Servamp was one of the first uh, simul dubs. Like mm -hmm. I was one of the, I got to, experience firsthand the right. insane turnaround for simul dubs yeah nice. the the one week turnaround per episode it's like time coding scripting dubbing mixing finalizing in a week in a week let that sink in mm -hmm. and so i had first example of that but that was re like really fun because you know i got to experience kind of my younger my younger years it's like not only in my new dragon ball i'm in it yeah. twice yeah. Mm -hmm. you know twice. yep mm -hmm. twice and technically three, three times, times. Uh -huh. because uh funny enough i got called in for a live action uh adr session at okratron and then uh, they they said oh, all right guys as a reward because it was like me damon mills uh i think patrick McAllister, a good couple people a good couple people and they said all right go to the next studio we got a surprise for you and we got to do additional voices for broly nice uh, yeah broly. hell yeah so it was a lot of fun getting to voice like a bunch of like Saiyans, uh, especially when like Frieza and all them invade the 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 planet Vegeta on the mm -hmm. the castle top. Mm -hmm. We got to play like a bunch of old a bunch of old gruff uh, uh, Saiyan counselors nice. and nice. aristocrats, and Dude. that was that was so much fun. But yeah, man, you know, man. Dragon Ball's no. Dragon Ball's got a special place in my heart. Absolutely, and everybody, man. Dude, and you got yeah. me thinking about that open in fifteen minutes. Uh... Yeah, Broly bro. too. It is so phenomenal. Yeah, man. like Brian, I was gonna ask you, like, how is it? Uh, because Dragon Ball Super Broly, 
Like it was already a big project, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to do some voice work in it. Like were you just as hyped when you did the additional voice work compared to, well not compared, but uh, when you actually- Alongside. Did, a, alongside like seeing the movie mm -hmm. in person. Because I like when me and Trav, we went to go see an opening night mm -hmm. and it's just like everybody in the theater, like they were just so animated. So, wild. Mm -hmm. so it was so wild. Like you are in the theater with Dragon Ball fans. Like how was it like actually like doing the recording and then going to the movie theater and like seeing it in person? Like was it was it just as uh, wild when you saw it in theaters? It was I'm not gonna lie, it was a, a riot because like um I went to go see the movie with uh some of my some of my friends and colleagues uh with Team Four Star. Mm -hmm. So I got I got to go we all got to mm -hmm. grouped up, you know, went to go see it. Um and like one thing with me like i'm just happy to work right. what like i because like my booth is actually right here like my actual nice. home studio is right here so i'm constantly hustling trying to get work you know but any gig i get i'm eternally grateful for you know and to actually sit there at the alamo draft house when it was still you know r.i.p um when it was still operating and just seeing that movie because the movie was just great because oh, like so good when i um because i got to do additional voices like throughout the movie so i saw most major pieces so when there were group shots mm -hmm. i'm in there with damon mills and pat McAllister. like i'm in there mm -hmm. and Crazy. so i got to see a good chunk of the movie well before it finished uh, mixing and finalizing and being put out into theaters and seeing it again it was so good and obviously credits were rolling up and then i see my name i even took uh -huh. a picture i took a picture before i got caught by the draft house staff i'm like no 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 i'm in that movie i'm just taking a picture <laughs> of the credits <laughs> and um it, it was just great because i mean that movie that movie it's phenomenal yeah it was but, a, it was a good movie man and yeah it's crazy it's crazy that uh it it feels like uh that movie it just came out but it came out years ago now yeah man. And uh, it's still a favorite amongst a lot of fans. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are, uh, you know, hoping and wanting to know when Dragon Ball Super, the anime, is going to return. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you've already had your foot in the door now three mm -hmm. times with this series. So I'm I'm sure that when it comes back around, you'll be back in the next season for it. Hopefully. Pinky's up. Hang on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> now i do got a question though since you know mm -hmm. you said you went with some of the guys from team team four star and you know mm -hmm. um the, what what is that kind of weird because i and, and clear up any rumors or anything but i know they got a rocky relationship with funimation as far as you know allegedly funimation getting them their stuff taken off and all this stuff is it when you have a friendship with somebody like that who is kind of rocky with people that hire you to do stuff like how is that kind of weird because banks knows from wrestling it's like there's a lot of wrestling mm -hmm. fans but sometimes they can get dicey mm -hmm. when you got all these other companies and stuff so like yeah let's see um funny enough um hey no pun intended yeah i just realized <laughs> what i said um i I met them when my career was still kind of starting. Mm -hmm. So I was still kind of, you know, finding my footing at Funimation mm -hmm. and I'm freelance. Like, right. I, tr I try to be like, I try to not pledge allegiance to anybody because it's like, look, I'm a freelancer. It, I'm, I'm, I go where the work is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just know? like wrestling. That's yeah, like exactly. Theater. It's like, Hey, I go where the work is, you know, you got, you got a job. Yeah. I'll do it. If the check doesn't bounce. Good. And then we move on and have a good day um you know and i've watched like funny enough when i met them i didn't even know who they were i'm like right. what's i'm like what's it i knew i knew about martin i knew about little karibo because mm, right. was that's the first thing like, i saw i didn't even see dragon oh. ball bridge i saw the Yu -Gi -Oh at bridge and most people did and i was aware of it because you know a lot of my friends uh would love sharing would mm. love sharing those videos and i'm really good friends with martin as well right and um you know it's we keep this you know the you know the the 
Leela's boss in, in Futurama. I like to keep my personal and professional life separate because yeah. it's like, look, yeah. we're we're here to we're here to see a movie. We're here to have a good time. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I keep. Here's the thing for any any advice for people who are in an industry as insane as this because it's a crazy industry. Anything yeah. entertainment wise, look, just you know, be polite. Keep your head down. Keep working. Don't look at anyone else's sheet. Just go because. You know, it's okay to like put yourself like you got to put yourself out there, but you know, sometimes you got to know when to do that. Mm -hmm. It's it's something you got to be very careful with, especially the you know these days because mm -hmm. with social media, we see and hear everything, and people talk. It's yep. a, it's a cold hard fact. People talk. I'm sure I'm sure people have said things about me. And you know what? It's the nature of the business, and I don't take it personally. It's like, look, it is what it is. It's their perception of me. That's fine. I. You know, I'm in control of what of my actions and what I do, mm -hmm. and I'm just here to treat anyone I work with with as much respect as possible and make sure everyone has fun and things get done on time, mm -hmm. you know, and they're good boys, right? But you know, like they love the franchise and Obviously. like yeah. they love the franchise and they try to do their legal due diligence, the disclaimer and stuff like that. And like this is my opinion you know it doesn't reflect on funimation or anyone else but it's like it's parody right. yeah exactly if, if yep. door if dorkly can get away with this with mario yeah you know but you know this is also um it's a more complicated issue because especially in uh companies like toei which yep. i believe is like if i were to get make a metaphor they are like the warner brothers of japan yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. they, are, they are they are and you know they have a different mindset in how they conduct business and how they view people handling their ip both in a non-monetization way and a monetization way and i get that you know um but you know that's just kind of th the way things are and i'm still in touch with them i've still i've st i've done parodies for them you know mm -hmm. i'd uh, like i, yeah, I saw voiced, some stuff in yeah. your reel <laughs> yeah, I I voice I voice the JoJo Banks. Nah, hey, you know I saw the JoJo. <laughs> of you course, you know I saw the JoJo. Yeah, you know, and like, or even when they did Final Fantasy Machine I was yeah, their, I, that, I was their to, Sid Highway. Dude, you got to be Sid, bro. Uh -huh, exactly, Sid. I got to be Sid, and you know, and and I tell people it's a parody. You know, right, it's yeah. a parody work. It's you know, it, 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 like, like I said, I go I go where the work is because it's freelance you know you yeah. gotta mm -hmm. you gotta work constantly to you know keep the lights on pay your rent and everything like that it's a tough business you know yeah. as long as you um like i said keep your head down you just do the work you treat everyone with respect you're gonna be fine and this yeah. stuff takes time this stuff takes a lot a lot of time because <clears throat> um for example i didn't book my first video game until like a few years after i started and that was with paladins yeah right. with high res and then you know like for example i st i would still get auditions from them i would keep auditioning 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 and i would never really book anything you know and i and then of course i got to do some auditions for uh gearbox at the time and then uh i got brought in for for borderlands 3 where I, you know, I played Domino, a uh, road dog, which is a hilarious character because yep. it's it's just Gearbox, you know, yeah. poking at Blizzard and Overwatch, and that mm -hmm. was fun. And you know, um, I got to voice Krieg's cell root or his cell neighbor, you know, in that flashback DLC. That was fun and sing terribly on purpose, and <laughs> um, like that's the thing. Um, sometimes this stuff takes time but as long as you have a positive attitude about it you're stay respectful humble. you stay humble and you just be fun to work with just have fun yep. have fun and you'll they'll remember you they're gonna remember you and it's like you know they didn't book this audition but i like what they can do and they seem really fun to work with and they'll they'll call you in like a good majority of my resume i've just been called in because i'm easy to work with and they know right. what i'm capable of yeah like that's how i should be it's yeah, like man. you shouldn't be a person who uh, starts drama, starts rumors, causes mm -hmm. problems, because it's like, believe it or not, if you're that person in some fields, uh, people, they won't want to work with you. It's like you 
possibly might end up not even uh, working in that field because mm -hmm. people know the type of reputation that you have. Yeah. I mean, like, and then news. they tell other people and they tell like, news man, travels I'm, fast. Yeah, I'm exactly. telling you, like, there have been situations in wrestling where it's just like, you know, somebody was going around and running their mouths mm -hmm. and saying stuff that they shouldn't have been saying. Mm -hmm. And then once they get caught, because word always travels. And mm -hmm. when you think that uh, when you think that you're you're just talking to one person, you're in a locker room with a bunch of people and mm -hmm. you never know who that person knows. And that word gets back to them and then bam, they're no longer Over. in the wrestling business. Bam. So, yeah, bam. You, bam. you have, to, you have to, you know, like I said, stay humble. Uh, one of the things that I've always done when it's come to wrestling, when I go in the locker room, it's like, you know, I shake everybody's hand mm -hmm. and I really, I, you know, I, I say friendly. But it's just like at the end of the day, it is business and you can't be friends with everybody, but you still, you know, you still want to play nice. You still say exactly. hey to everybody, you joke around. But at the end of the day, you're there to work. You're there to mm -hmm. you know, put money in your pocket, put food on the table. Yeah. And uh, so so I get it, man. I mm -hmm. get it. Uh, and Trav, I thought that that was a good question because I know oh, that you. that is something um when it comes to funimation and team four star i remember like a lot of a lot of fans who watched the uh, dragon ball the bridge series like they were pissed off at funimation yeah, but it's yeah. just like nah it's it's not on funimation it's it's on it's on toho you know what i'm saying like it's uh, toei toho's toho. godzilla <laughs> sorry sorry but even, yeah but even if it was on funimation again it's just, it's a business thing and that, sometimes yeah. man it's just kind of how, how it, it is yep. yeah it's just kind of yeah. how it goes dude now Brian, I had a question for you. Um, yeah, one of hey, uh, me and, it. yeah, one of me and Trav's favorites is One Piece. Mm -hmm. Was that a was that a good project for you, or did it have did it hold any sentimental value for you? Looks like you got a story for me. Okay, yeah. here's the thing. <laughs> I, I always have this joke. Yeah, uh, like I say, as long as One Piece is still running, there's a good chance I'm still I'm gonna get some kind of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. because one piece is so much fun like i never like i kind of watched a little bit of it when it yeah. came out on i saw the four kids stuff i know the rap you yeah. know i remember hey, one hey, hey well for people who don't know the rap do you mind yeah. uh like i i, I know i know a little bit of it like it's been years but like i i'm more of like as an editor i know the 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 changes the censorship sanjay mm -hmm. it's a lollipop not a cigarette you uh, know right? and, yeah. and all that all stuff the four yeah. kids stuff. but more importantly how's that song go? yeah how's that song go? <sighs> easy guys. hey what hey, i'll join you on it god it's like i go guy go uh let's see dreaming don't give up luffy dreaming don't give up uh let's see was it luffy um zolo dreaming solo solo dreaming don't give it up hey hold on it ain't nami it's nami yeah there we go you gotta punch it with that yeah yeah exactly hey brian for the longest time me and d thought that they were saying gotta go gotta go and yeah then i looked at the lyrics i was like is y'all yo what a day that was what is y'all yo even was mean? that just a like <laughs> yeah it might be slang <laughs> it's gotta be slang maybe maybe not really sure i'm not i'm not sure either but yeah like one piece when i when i got into one piece mostly like bit parts and stuff like yeah. I, just one piece a one piece session is always fun yeah it's always fun because you could because just look at how they're look at how oda draws these characters you can just right. go ham this mm -hmm. isn't shakespeare nope. you know you got you got female you got female characters that are literal hourglasses their waistlines I are know. like this <laughs> you, know, you know it's like you either look like this or you know your waistline's just a sphere you know uh -huh. it's exactly like you can go ham you, you know you can go gritty you can go brutal you can go angry and nice. just get real hammy with it and i love it mm -hmm. and that was actually how i met um joel mcdonald who nice. was one of the main uh adr directors for one piece at the time mm -hmm. and you know i got to meet like joel it's always a ride working with joel because like what what's so great is like Joel will give you like this big synopsis like okay man so I'm gonna give you the uh, you know the four one one on this so here's the scenario and he'll go through this long whole <laughs> spiel and I'm just uh -huh. playing a, and I'm just playing a big character that has like five or six lines but it helps so yeah. I know what kind of inflection I gotta give I gotta know who I'm sh like obviously you get the video picture you know who you're shouting at and everything yeah. but mm -hmm. he knows how to build the atmosphere for the scene even if you're just playing like you know a navy soldier or a pirate or a fishman or right. Or a yeah, kid yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. he knows how to set the scene and it's just always fun because um that's also how i've cut one piece is the reason my voice is more 
gravelly in texture now these days because of all the <laughs> the screaming and the mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know and, and that, go ahead i was gonna say that's so crazy i didn't know that he did one piece i just know him because initial d is one of my favorite mm -hmm. animes and you know he plays the main character takami so it's yeah like, i didn't even know that he was yeah um directing I, on one piece if i recall it, one piece was shared between Mike McFarlane and Joel McDonald. They okay, they kind of it depends on the workload. Still two crazy names. Though. Hey, Mike McFarlane yeah. is a really really cool <laughs> <Yeah>. guy. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Mike is a great guy to work with. Like yeah. every everyone at Funimation, I love working with. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, but when it's a one piece session, it's like oh, I'm gonna have a good day. Uh -huh. my, throat, my my throat's gonna get thrashed, but I'm gonna have a good good day. That's what she said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um hey real quick um uh quick story about mike mcfarland <clears throat> um it was the first con that i had went to here in virginia mm -hmm. and it was he, it was him and it was the original voice actress who voiced ash and pokemon mm -hmm. and everybody was in her line and like there was nobody in mike's line like there was a couple people that went over there and whatnot and this was at neko a couple years ago no, right no this wasn't neko this was uh i think it was called like bam toy games and toy gone or something like that mm -hmm. oh okay and so i go over to mike and i'm just like hey man you know i have this dragon ball z group on facebook called roshi's island and uh you know, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan. Oh my God, I remember this. Now that yep. you're talking about you, remember you know, it. Yes. <laughs> unfo unfortunately, my original Facebook account got deleted. But remember, he Ooh. did the video. He did the video, and I had asked him. I was just like, "Hey, do you think that you could do a video for like all of the fans in the group? Because you know, we we named the group after the character that, who you voice, and he did the video, and he even did the voice as Master Roshi, and it was just so cool because that was real cool. It's like. You know, I think it, he was charging like forty dollars to do it, and like mm -hmm. I said, there was nobody in his line. I told him who I was and whatnot, and I was also there promoting uh, the wrestling promotion that I wrestled at, and mm -hmm. he did it. He did it for free, and like it, it was so cool, man. It's it's just I, I feel blessed to uh, you know get into situations like that where it's like I meet somebody because I I don't know if you're big into horror, but um, oh, I met yeah. uh, what's his name. Yeah, uh, uh, who uh, plays Jason Voorhees. Uh, he plays Jason. I met uh, Kane, Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. Uh, nice, so nice. I met. There's this uh, Kane Hodder story is amazing. Yeah, too. it's it's this horror <laughs> convention in uh, in Williamsburg, right? Called mm -hmm. Scares That Care. And I'm good in name, the bathroom. Good name. Yeah, you it's a what? charity. It's a charity event. It's a charity event, and I'm in the bathroom, and I'm wearing like this uh this original horror costume that I came up with, and then like he just walks in the bathroom, and he was just like. Yeah, that's a sight to see when you come in the bathroom. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I, I know who you are. You're Jason. And and he's just like, yeah, that's me. And I was just like, hey, man, like, I know who you are. Can, can I get a picture with you? He's like, sure. And he took a picture with me and my friend James. And nice. uh, he was a he was a real nice guy. And then I had made a reference to the Wayans brothers uh, when I was just like, man, there was this episode of the Wayans brothers where Marlon shook the president's hand. And uh, and a Kane was just like he was just like yeah I remember that episode too and like my mind was just blown because you know sometimes you you mention references and stuff and you know everybody doesn't watch the same stuff mm -hmm. so when I said that I was just like man this guy's cool and again forty dollars to go at the table and meet him mm -hmm. but to catch him in the bathroom and it, it was just <laughs> random so I, like yeah man, I'll, I'll always remember those stories. got your money's worth huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, my money's worth. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Now, Brian, Time to um, take a tinkle. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Next question, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you see a two different angles to what you learn from doing uh, additional voices opposed to a main character? Are there two different angles to that, and what you learn? Maybe the range of your voice mm -hmm. or anything like that. Well. When it comes to doing WALA, which is an acronym for with all actors. Um, Interesting. WALA is basically, this is your improv homework. Like mm. there is literally, there are so many shows. If I had a dollar for every time I had to do a 90 to two, 90 second to two minute WALA queue of just bar chatter, school <laughs> chatter, <laughs> high school chatter. That's like where so we, much where we just have to, sounds. We just have to make stuff up uh -huh. <clears throat> for two minutes. Wow. That two minutes can feel like an eternity if you're not prepared. Yeah. And I learned real quick. And especially because, you know, pre-COVID, um, 
you know, this was all grouped in house to like me and like three other people. They usually do wall in groups of four. And mm -hmm. this is how I, I've made some of my uh, good friends like Travis Molyneux, especially uh, my buddy Travis, who recently has done some One Piece work. Great dude, excuse me. Big Godzilla fan as well. Nice. nice. We would nice. we would always do when, when we're in a wall session together, it's like, okay. <laughs> You're my wallet uh, partner. You're my wallet partner. So we're because like I will pick out who I work best with and we'll just rift. And some of the dumbest things we've said in wallet that they don't cut, like in mix, the baseball anime. We said some of the dumbest, <laughs> dumbest mm -hmm. things in mix and they kept it. And I'm like, wow, because like Ant Anthony Bowling was just having a ride. But Walla is real good improv practice. And it also gives you a little bit time to uh warm up and work out some things because you never want to experiment when you're on the clock like yeah, you do exactly. you do that you do that off the clock you do that uh it, when you take workshops and stuff like that um but when you want to pr uh, practice something you you've nailed down pretty good but not concrete wall is a kind of a good way to do it especially um something i actually learned when i took uh, I took a workshop with Andrea Toyas, who is the voice over director for Blizzard. Nice. You know, she taught she taught us about the classic fantasy accent, the mid Atlantic accent, or as I call it, I can't believe it's not British. Um, <laughs> and the easiest way to break that accent down is over enunciating every word, speak it in a very breathy tone, and hit your D's and T's very hard, but not your R's. And that's the basic basis of it so when you want to practice with like a dialect or an accent you can kind of get away with it because they can they mix in the elements the music the sfx especially right, when it's yeah. like a battle scene people letting out battle cries or whatever you can kind of get away with it but when you book a name part it's like you lock this in mm -hmm. you you make your choices for the character and you lock it in because when i did servamp for sunny Every time I came back in, they would replay. Okay, we're going to play back a sample so you remember what you did last episode. And Sakuya, it was easy. It's just basically me, me talking with a shitty grin the entire mm -hmm. time. So <laughs> I kind of wish they had. I kind of wish they had the camera in the booth when I did that because I would always have this stupid Joker smile every time I'm talking. But yeah, a main role when you do a named part. You really got to lock in everything, but with Walla, it's more improv heavy and you can really experiment. And again, it's kind of like, kind of like when you're on a field trip, you do the buddy system, find your buddy, right. like, find, yeah, yeah. find your buddy. Because, um, when I do Walla and, you know, luckily a lot of people are cool with it. I actually get a little bit like handsy, especially when it's like a bar scene, a lot of like grabbing shoulders, you know, the, you know, uh -huh, shoulder yeah, yeah, checking yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I get really into it because you kind of have to. You can't just sit on a stool and then act and cut, you know, like act out a bar scene or sing a shanty while sitting like this. You have to sway with the music, sway with the cadence, and yeah. you know, that's how I do. While I get really into it, and you know, people people dig it especially when we have to like i i sometimes end up being a conductor in walla so when we have to do chants in unison mm -hmm. i usually hold my hand up so you know i'll do this <laughs> and everyone kind of starts doing it and yeah that's basically how i feel the main difference is for for additional voices or walla compared to a named part because when you do a named part you've made your choices to the character so you commit to those choices all mm -hmm. the way through until that character is done or killed yeah. off or the show's done and with again with Walla, you, yeah. you play, you play, you play right. for ten, you have fun. Nice. Is, now, was that kind of like one of the last steps? You're like they already got in the music, everybody's already laced their parts, and then they bring you guys in to do that stuff. So there's like it depends. a lot for you to go off of. It yeah. depends. Like what they typically do, especially when it's like a big scene, like Attack on Titan. You know, mm -hmm. especially when there's big Walla scenes for Attack on Titan, usually it's a mix of men and women. So there's a girl's Walla and a boy's Walla. So sometimes the girl's Walla will get their Walla session done first so we can hear what they're doing, especially when it's, you know, ah! you know, panic right, and, yeah, yeah. Panic and yeah. screams in the street. You get something to work off of because, you know, some people are going to do their parts ahead of time of yours. And, you know, it's not just like boy walla girl walla it's boy walla one boy walla two girl right. walla one girl walla two so people are going to be before you and people are going to be after you so you will always have something to work with but with additional voices it depends on the show sometimes they have the, the music already there mm -hmm. sometimes they add it later in the mix 
But now because of simul dubs, it's all there because they get all of their their music assets from the Japanese companies right, that send them right. the assets. Now, Brian, uh, I want to piggyback off a of Trav real quick. That's right. Let me get hey, that first but piggyback. Be before you ask that question, yeah, go. I need you to show my man D this can't be figurine, bro. Uh huh. Hey, I so, was gonna bring that up. <laughs> yep. So, let, for context, let me cascade it in there nicely. So again, work with Joel. I've auditioned for One Piece Gold, you know, and I didn't really book anything, but you know, Joel knows what I'm capable of, so he brought me in. And when he told me about this movie, you know, after the audition and everything, I'm like, oh, it's like Ocean's Eleven, but with pirates. Right. I love yes. it. <laughs> that's a nice, that's the great way to look at it. Yeah, Good and movie. then he, yeah, and then he told me we have essentially a wacky racers bit i'm like you're joking no so he shows me this guy because you know my typecasting i guess is usually you know something loud and gritty mm -hmm. you know constantly that's that's my bread and butter me nice. breaking my voice is my <laughs> bread and butter <laughs> and he showed me this one racer that is in this big pickup truck with an anthropomorphic ox named pork in the back <laughs> voiced by josh Greeley, by the way and um i was like oh please let me see it in the japanese let's do it right now and i did yep there there he was just now on your screen and and i no, didn't I did do it that on purpose either exactly i did it the move the movie came out saw the movie the movie was great years later i think uh, last year or so i found out that in japan they had a bunch of figures for the movie and mm -hmm. my boy sick my boy got a figure that's so and sick. yeah, it's it's really cool. And they even got the the little tattoo on his arm, the beef nice. tattoo, and everything. Mm -hmm. and Woody outfit, the yeah. Woody outfit. The, the <laughs> Woody. It, is, it is the Woody outfit. It's totally the Woody uh -huh. outfit. Yeah, exactly. No, but One Piece Gold was so much fun because I did Kent Beef Junior, and I also did a few of the prisoners that escaped. Like, mm -hmm. I actually got to be the exposition guy. I got to do expository dialogue explaining how this like gold prison cell works and like it's That's crazy. Just, it's so much fun. Like like I said, one piece is always a hoot. If I'm working with Joel McDonald, it's like, oh, it's gonna be a fun day. It's gonna be yeah. a it's gonna be a fun day and I'm gonna go ham. Yeah, before I piggyback, I wanna piggyback off of what you brought up just now. Back to One Piece. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite character in the series? Doesn't have to be a good guy or part of the straw hats. Do you have a favorite? Doesn't have to be, you know, no restrictions. Who you right. Got. I'm kind of torn between a couple. Um, again, it, it's been a hot minute. Um, Hawkeye Mihawk. I mean, you know, yeah, sick. Hawkeye, that's a nice that's character. Sick. You know, great, good, great. good one. Like, I'm, I'm <laughs> a huge swordsman thing. Like, that's yeah. what me and my dad bonded over. My dad is a big like martial art, like swordsman fan, and nice. you know, we got, you know, this we. Guy? Yay! Good stuff. And yeah. um, like, you know, we have the entire Zatoichi collection, the blind swordsman stuff. Yep. But oh, yeah. that's the something I loved about One Piece was all the swordsman characters. Oh yeah. They play right. on it very well. And yeah, it's so good. And of course, uh, you know, Z Zolo, you know, Zoro. Um, I loved his stuff. Savit does a great job with that character. Definitely. And oddly enough, I really dig Sanji. I love like, Sanji. Sanji is uh, up yeah. there yeah I think Sanji's that's why up there. it's such a fun show is because it's kind of all over the place mm -hmm. just like uh zora or zolo however you want to pronounce it how he's a complete badass but then he's terrible with directions right right you know right. he's just like yeah yeah i'll help you as soon as i get there you know it's <laughs> yeah just fun. so it's just um a lot to play with that you have tom tom chopper he's mm -hmm. one of my favorites yeah. Very, that's what i'm saying man the characters it's just, yeah, are just so fun wild. then you got uh oh, brooks you yep know. He's an undead musician, basically. Yep. His, basically, his his ability gave him a second life, but not his body. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, just so right. fun to play with. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. Ian does such a good job with that character. And Ian is a sweetheart. Like, every t like when studio sessions were still a thing, you know, every time I see Ian, we would just catch up and nerd out because Ian is a bit Like, let's see, Ian, Rico Fiardo. Like, funny enough, a good chunk of people at Funimation big magic the gathering nerds like right. sick big i like, played a rico, lot of magic coming up rico has won tournaments mm. and i'm like you owe me a match dude and mm -hmm. i'm like i'm not gonna leave you alone i'm not gonna leave you alone until we play a game of commander mm -hmm. so you're not escaping me <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Now, I want to piggyback off of what D just did. Mm. Where he showed his uh, he showed his Zoro collection. Zolo, mm. I'm sorry. Mm. And Brian, you have a collection behind you. I see you have a GameCube Nintendo. Now, to our listeners who are listening, you're going to have to watch the video so that way that you can see Brian's collection. But I see you got the black GameCube Nintendo back there. Mm-hmm. What else do you have back there, man? Um, I'm going to try and like describe it as best I can for your listening audience. So I have basically the one, two, three. Uh, it's the four tier glass cases at Ikea. So top <laughs> rack. So top rack, you're right. GameCube, my original GameCube from was it 2001 was when they came out I, yep, my, I thought it was like 2004 still works that i still hear the bird chirp every time i boot it up Damn <laughs> right, hell yeah still works paper mario thousand year door in the box soul caliber 2 in the box star fox assault yeah. in the box star fox adventure in the box yep. the shelf below it i got some atari cartridges and atari mm. memorabilia that my buddy uh george edwards uh from austin bought uh got me some of the original sword quest cartridges not right. water world because not right, water world because yeah. that's like 300 dollars. um i got the et cartridge i got the berserk cartridge i still have et it's somewhere in my grandma's house but i have it. i don't know where it's just somewhere it's somewhere good grandma. stuff like and it. right next to it is a neo geo pocket color that's wild with, with the box and the paperwork and God. it's got a cartridge of metal slug in there nice nice uh game boy advance sp the fire engine red with pokemon fire red in it and pokemon Mm -hmm. emerald on top of it and i got the monster hunter generations 3ds xl in there and funny enough while i was cleaning up my office i found the box so i still i still have the box speaking of collections um Mm -hmm. i actually have the uh fire emblem right here hey nice i see yeah. it oh, unopened wow. yeah Ooh, I never unopened. Yep. so That's yeah stuff right I, there. I dabbled a little bit just a little I mean, bit. Yep. i want i want to grab something too uh <laughs> 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 let me reach and get this uh i gotta put it up because like trav always says i'm always sitting so far away but i have this uh is that vegeta That's it's vegeta. vegeta and it's signed by uh christopher sabbath nice. like w- one of the cool things about being a professional wrestler is we have some amazing fans and this fan his name is tanner he mm-hmm. drove mm-hmm. i believe it was one of the cons in north carolina and chris was there and sean and he got he got me this too it's goku he got both of them to sign these for me nice. and i was just like, Absolutely I, was like bad. I was like that's awesome man you know and Dude, this guy went to the con right so mm-hmm. paid for a ticket to the con drove there paid for the pop and paid the 40 50 for your boy for benjamin banks wow. all for your boy benjamin all banks, for your boy benjamin banks. Yep. Hey, hey, i got I a heart legit. of gold man combo breaker I got nothing. I got nothing. No, I just got this vo- I just got this volume three of IDW collection of turtles, Ooh, bro. Nice. My friend, my friend mm, Josie would it. love that. Good I'm stuff. A, yeah, everybody, I'm you a know, huge turtle. Nice job, team. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. I have was when uh, IDW they had uh, what they they reshared your photo when you yeah, had the yeah, when, turtles. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Movie. When uh, the last Ronin came out, the first yeah. issue of last Ronin, I took a picture with it. And mm-hmm. uh, they put it up on their Instagram. It was like last Ronin out, and it had uh-huh. me holding up the comic, and I was like, "Holy crap!" It, it, that's it was nice. It was crazy because uh, what's uh, I met uh, Kevin Kevin Eastman. Kevin like, Eastman, he, had, he liked it, and he, he said, "Cowabunga!" He, com- he commented right. on Trav's photo. And I didn't believe. And when it. I had really told him sick. about it, he was just like, "Shut up, you're lying." I'm like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, he literally commented on it, and, and then they then they shared his photo. So. It's mm-hmm. always cool, man. When hey, hold like, on, hold on. And the guy that played Leonardo and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one and two, Ooh. He, he commented hey, on it as well. Hey, bro, you know what I've, I've been sliding in his, D- I've been sliding in his DMs since season one of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and he always leaves me on red. Dude, because so. he's a gold medal Olympian. <laughs> hey, look, man, <laughs> you, you gonna get him up here on the podcast? I'm gonna be like, look, man, I've been sliding in your pod. I mean, not your podcast, but your DMs. For years now, it's like you got to hook us up, man. Hook a brother <laughs> up, and he's gonna say, "I know, I, I put the restraining out on you." <laughs> I'm gonna send you a message, all right? Oh, oh boy, oh, he gonna man. get the rest of his brothers. Uh huh. Uh huh. They gonna come after me. That's right. Um, God. But- 
but yeah, I guess to kind of wrap up the rest of the cabinet, um, oh, under yeah. under that one, my original Jungle Green N64 mm, with wow. the transfer pack. With the transfer, Ooh, transfer pack. pack and yeah, I got mine. It's somewhere over there. <laughs> and a pr- protected box copy of Star Fox 64. Nice. Mm. Then below it, original SNES. Do with... a barrel roll. Yep. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. And with the SNES, I got Donkey Kong Country, Shadow Run, and Mario Kart. That Shadow Run. Yep. Good. And Ooh. a NES cartridge of Castlevania. Ooh, wow. nice. And a fun co-land sleeve. <laughs> Wow, Funko Land. Now, R-I-P. listeners and viewers, if you don't know what yeah. Funko Land is, Funko Land was GameStop before it was GameStop. And nice. I remember when the first Funko Land opened up here in uh in Virginia. Yep. I remember like they sent like these newspaper art like not articles, but like they mm-hmm. like they were the size of newspapers and it showed it told you every single game that they had at Funko Land, all the way from Atari to current video games, but then they became GameStop and they got yeah. rid of all of the older games. Mm-hmm. But Dude. back when it first opened up, like yeah. that was like it was it was literally a video game heaven. And even yeah. there is a video game heaven yeah. here in Virginia, but it was literally like if there was a game that you wanted when you played it when you were a kid, or if mm-hmm. there was a game that because I never knew that there was a Captain Planet video game until like I saw mm-hmm. I was just like, oh wow, there was a Captain Planet video game on the Nintendo. So yeah, so funny that you bring that up, Banks, because it was like word. It was only word of mouth basically back then, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and it's so yeah. if you look like go looking for stuff, it's like you find it. Uh, Brian, mm-hmm. one question for you: video game, old video games. Have you ever heard of a game called Rocky and Pocky? Yes, actually. Yeah, see, tell I yeah. was telling. I think I was telling Banks this the other day, or I brought it up a couple weeks ago to him. I told him it's a really good game if you go back mm-hmm. and want to play something interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Man, I've that's... never heard of it. Yeah, that is really old. He man. was just telling me. It's, that. Yeah, very fun. It was like one of the first games I played where you could actually collect different characters to play as, mm-hmm. and it's not like one, two, and three. It's like I think it's like eight or nine playable characters on it, but mm. it's oh, it's up there. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of them. Yeah, fun game. Oh yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah, now, of course. Thanks for being a witness. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it really happens. Now, Brian, I wanted to kind of piggyback and go back to uh, when you had mentioned that you had Star Fox 64 still in the mm-hmm. box and everything. Like, was that your favorite Nintendo 64 game? Because it definitely was in my top five for Nintendo 64 games. It's in my top five. Um, like, again, I've kind of been recollecting some of the stuff I've had in my childhood. Um, hence the SNES, the 64. I mean, I got to play PS1 somewhere in this yeah. office. I got to find... Um, if I can get my hands on Stadium Pokemon Stadium Two and the box, mm. I'm I'm good. Those mini that, games alone. That's somewhere over my grandma's house. It, it, it's uh-huh. either somewhere over my grandma's house or somebody stole it from me. I, I really, Oof. I really Michael? think somebody stole it from me. <laughs> I know I had to do it, Michael. <laughs> Because it's it, it was I mean it was a hot game and it's it's just crazy that it's like I still have Pokemon Stadium but I could never find Pokemon Stadium too. That's why Stone Cold Steve Austin said, "Don't trust anyone and yeah. you know, let people come up in my grandma's house mm-hmm. and somebody snatched it up." Yep. Yeah, it was Pokemon Stadium too. It was cool. Remember the cartridge? It was silver and gold. And man, that yep. game was amazing. It was it was so much better than Pokemon Stadium. It was one of the first games alongside with. Pokemon Gold and Silver, where pre-orders became a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember, um, you know, eh, back in my day, um, <laughs> when Toys R Us rip um, was still Ooh. a thing, and they had the little slips of paper, the five dollars yeah, slips of paper for I pre-orders. Yep. Yeah, yep. God, I, I, I they, dude, they had slips of paper for anything. <laughs> video game related or big so like if you wanted the playground like your parents were going to get you the swing set they'd have to take the slip go up to the front mm-hmm. counter bring the car around back load it in yeah whole process god almighty so was our ass hey, uh, it's coming back hey i i was oh, yeah. more of a fan of kb kb yeah i like kb, KB toys, toys was good too back in the day. funny enough kb toys was I don't have them anymore because I lost them when I when because I moved house a few times. KB mm-hmm. Toys is where I got a good chunk of my action figures, specifically Ronin Warriors, Primal Rage, Primal Ooh. Rage, Primal Rage. Now, a colleague of mine, Matt McMuscles, did a recent Wahapan on Primal Rage too, 
And I decided to do a little digging in my old uh, my old office desk, and I found the cards that used to come with the figures. Wow. Yeah, that's wild. Yep. Oh, Talk about a throwback, man. I, I want like it's mm. it's crazy, man. Because me and D, we were just talking about this the other day, where when we were coming up, like fighting games were everywhere, mm -hmm. and we, were just we had uh, we had I had mentioned uh, the joystick controller, and D's son was just like, "Well, what's a joystick controller?" <laughs> And we, it's Dang, like we sound like two stick. old men mm -hmm. <laughs> telling them, telling them what a joystick controller is, because it's like you don't, you really don't see them anymore. I mean, Only like, if you're super into fighting games, you have. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know yeah. that you can have it, like you can have them customized. And yeah, made. yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I can only mm -hmm. imagine how much they charge for that. It's not depends much. on the maker. It yeah, depends it's on the maker. Really not a lot. Depends well, it also depends on maker. what you want doing to it. Yeah, too. yeah exactly. It's For parts, sure. the maker, and the labor. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. we knew uh, nice our, our one friend, Jamel Martin, when he brought out that joystick controller, you already knew it, it was game. You were going to have a bad time. You were going to have a bad time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were going to have a bad time if he pulled that out, man. But yeah. I mean, they were cool. I mean, it was cool seeing. Uh, I feel like they don't do it anymore, but I remember uh, Resident Evil 4. Remember they had the chainsaw controller that came yeah, out? Yeah. The mm -hmm. most weird thing to grab to play a game. Uh -huh. game. <laughs> I really feel like the last game that did it was Gears of War on the Xbox One. Yeah, they have a chainsaw War 5 came too? out. No, it wasn't a chainsaw controller. When Gears of War what 5 came out, they had the custom. Like gears type controller for that yeah. box. Oh, okay, I didn't okay. know that, Trev. Thanks. But I can't think of anything lately that's like Man, they don't do it. Like, do you guys remember when uh when Wu Tang Shaolin Monks came out on the PS One, and yeah. then they came out with the, the the PlayStation controller that was shaped like the Wu Tang Clan symbol? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. cool. But that I that controller that. was garbage. It was know? garbage. And, and I still, <laughs> and I still, isn't I still it have like that a, game too. It was it like a sixty-four controller, like it, that. It was no, like a giant it, W. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was very like curved. You had to hold but it like this, like you're cradling like a baby. Yeah, yeah I think uh -huh. we're good. Yep. Yeah, we're good on that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but it's it's a it's a nice collectible though, and I still have Absolutely. that game. I now that game isn't at my grandma's house. I actually have that here with me. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'll send but, Michael. Uh, well, we are gonna have to roll up the grandma's house. Oh and God! And I'll, hit that I'll say like one it's of like the. One of the Let's stupidest that. things that I've that I did when it's come to uh, letting somebody borrow a video game. Do you guys remember Aragaz? It was the fighting game that had the yeah. Final Fantasy characters. Character. Oh yep. man! I let somebody borrow that, and what happened to it? You know, you I'm going to ask him if he still has it because I mean, it, it's a classic. It, I mean, it was a fighting game that had Final Fantasy characters up there when Final Fantasy characters were cool. It was just yeah. like when uh. When Gundam Battle mm. Assault One came out, mm. and Fun it guy. had Hero Yui up there, right, right, you know, yeah. it's just like I, you know, you didn't know who anybody else was, but you knew who Hero Yui was, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But with that, I actually did a, a smart move because with a point. I I let somebody borrow Gundam Battle Assault, and they let me borrow Gundam Battle Assault Two, and then they ended up moving, and I felt like I won in this situation because Gundam <laughs> Battle Assault Two was way better. Than it had Gundam way Battle more Assault suits one. in it. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, you had the burning Gundam, you had all mm -hmm. these cool, uh, all these cool Gundams in it. Mm -hmm. But um, Brian, I wanted to kind of uh, dial it back into voice mm -hmm. acting. What are some future projects that you have coming up that you can let everybody know about, or can't let everybody know about? Yeah, if you can't, then you don't <laughs> just have to uh, just shake your head. Uh -huh. If you're in trouble, just shake your head two times, and we'll know. <laughs> if Michael is, in I, I, I I honestly can't think of anything I'm at liberty to say right now. Okay. Good. Um, because I've like I have done stuff, but I'm still under NDA and I'm still waiting for those things to be done. Mm -hmm. Um, and funny enough, honestly, the thing that's kept me busy, especially during the pandemic, is I've been doing voiceover for schools. Nice. Like for quiz, that's like sick. on like online quizzes and stuff, and they pay well too. So <laughs> nice. Damn, um, that's nice. Well, no, you gotta yeah. explain this because. <laughs> You know, my kids are, you know, virtual. Yep, mine too. And there's well, no, yeah, there's no um, voiceover quizzes that they're taking. You know, mm -hmm. it's just there. So please explain that. Well, specifically, the school I worked with is an uh, online school program called Summit K-12. They're based in Austin and they do. Yeah, I've seen those commercials. Yeah, they do uh, basically everything for like. Not just K through twelve stuff, but ESL English mm -hmm. as a second language, right. and that typically is kind of when the voiceover stuff happens because it's mainly for the ESL students so they can learn English and also work on their primary school education. So, you know, it's kind of like how 
Uh, you know how sometimes we've taken like those, you know, those retail corporate quizzes we do before uh-huh. we like at the interview, and you know, it's like in this you situation, the what, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of what I did, and boy, howdy, did it tighten my diction and how I pronounce uh-huh. certain words. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. I've actually gotten into not like mean arguments, but like round table arguments on how certain words are produced because you know in some regions it's got to be pr- like pronounced one way and another region it's another like the easiest example is the jewish religion right you know the jewish religion depending on who you ask it's pro- pr- pronounced in two ways judaism or judaism right and i always went with the uh the international judaism right i always mm-hmm. call it judaism yeah, yeah same here exactly and it's like it's like no well it has to be pronounced judaism and i'm just like really it's like well that's how they pronounce it here in the states i'm like whatever you're paying me <laughs> so i did it but yeah it, e-learning is a definitely an interesting venue because like i'm glad you brought you you brought this up and you kind of got me on this whole spiel because a lot of people uh tend to like let's see how can i phrase this anime stuff is great like it's fun yeah there's other aspects of the industry that pay more consistently and better the biggest example is commercials right like you want to go full-time and just do that you do commercials and you do promos because here's how typically uh commercials work commercials are done in campaigns they Mm -hmm. span either six months or 12 months Let's say you booked a commercial for, I don't know, you know, here at T-Mobile, you know, you do a T-Mobile ad and they run that ad for six to 12 months. Every month that ad is being run, you get a check. Yeah. Nice. Our former guest, Shell Ramos, is the new T-Mobile lady that like speaks over. And I know she's collecting that check every month and it's nice. Yeah, exactly. Because like if you like... B- like book when i booked a big character like sakuya and servamp i was getting a pretty consistent like one to two sessions for like six to twelve weeks and mm-hmm. it was it was fine pay for what it was you know a, cu- a few hours of my time and you know at a good rate but then that's it the show's done show yeah. never got a new season that's it right you know and you would have to do sessions every day for a few hours to make a living off of just purely like ADR, you right. know, un- unless you're doing ADR for like a big Hollywood movie and, you know, commercials, promo, e-learning, you know, the stuff that people don't really think about actually is the financial foundation for a lot of full-time VO talent. You talk mm-hmm. to anyone in LA, especially if you live in LA, you need to be booking commercial gigs to pay that rent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's something I always tend to talk to people when they want to get into it. It's like, look, the video games, the cartoons, the the anime, that's really fun, really fun. And I love it when I get to do it. Doesn't pay enough to pay the rent and the bills unless you are booking stuff constantly. Right, yeah. right, right. You got to be one of the top dogs in it. Exactly. Yeah, we, we heard that before um, with one of our former guests, uh, Link Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Um, how he was telling us, you know, you have to be doing it consistently. Um, because if not, I mean, even if you are doing it consistently, it's just like, sometimes the pay isn't always that good. And yeah, how you just said, when it comes to, you know, getting in commercials and whatnot, you know, that will help you in the long run compared to, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of just doing voice acting where, um, you know, once you're done, you're done. It's like, you have to, you have to find the next gig and, Sometimes you're not going to always land that big role. Sometimes you might, you know, come on and just do a couple of lines and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You know, and that works just for on screen acting as well. That's why you see big celebrities still doing like commercials. Like, remember the, hi, I'm a PC, I'm a Mac. You know, remember that? Justin, Justin Wong was in some pretty big movies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like Galaxy Quest. Um, I think he was in the first Jeepers Creepers. Um, yeah, waiting. You know, he was in the second. Yeah. Well, he was kind of in the second. Kind of. Yeah, he did a cameo. Yeah, he sure still, did. Still had to do commercials because, again, commercials running campaigns. Hey, Shaq, every month. Shaq's still doing commercials. You yep. know what uh-huh. I mean? So the general. Yeah, exactly. 
Jeff or Goldblum. or like mm-hmm. J- John Stamos. I know he did a couple. Oh yeah, John um, Stam- He does the yogurt. He does a couple, like you just said. Yeah, um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Curtis, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or here I'm gonna go real back in time. William Shatner for Price Line. Price Line. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'm sure he got compensated extremely well. Yeah, because it's that. it's not just one thing for your fee that your agent puts up. It's also you know a royalty thing because your right, like yeah. your likeness is on yeah. camera. Uh-huh. So that check is even more. And they that's on Kuko to do it with yeah, him. She did too. a couple. Yes, yeah. she did yes. a couple. So. Jennifer she Love did a couple. Hewitt. She was doing mm-hmm. um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Now T she used the to cards. do them back in the day. Yeah, yeah, it's yep. crazy. And now Mr. T's back doing commercials again. And now yeah. he's doing it with yep. Ice P and Stone Cold. So Yeah, exactly. And that's why, um, especially one of the eventual things that even I haven't gotten to that point yet is eventually getting with an agent. And then when you reach a certain point, you would have to join SAG AFTRA, the Screen Actors Guild. Right. Because mm-hmm. they, they also cover voiceover. And, and you know, in SAG, um, Try basically try to make sure you get a, a minimum set amount of hours and a minimum payout per session. And now, uh, thanks to some of the uh, actions of uh, some of the LA talent for voiceover uh, who've been fighting for the rights of voiceover, they tend to now make sure the really hardcore screamy lines that literally can damage you, they you save them for last. Yeah. Because, uh, fun story, I... And this is kind of a wrestling thing as well. I auditioned for like an indie card game. I feel really bad. I can't remember what it was, but I auditioned for this game. And the card, the character on the card is the Ludus champion. It's like a, like a Spartan kind of looking guy. Yeah. And the and the direction notes were Macho Man Randy Savage. Hey. <laughs> So I learned the hard way. I can do Macho Man Randy Savage. I've done I've done joke videos of Macho, Macho Man Randy Savage in the past, especially when Martin does anything wrestling related. Yeah, I booked the gig. I had to do Macho Man Randy Savage for ninety minutes straight. That's mm. wild. I couldn't talk for a week. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, exactly. So that's another thing people tend to not realize is like. These are muscles. These are muscles, and you can tear and damage them like any muscle in your body. So if you don't warm up, if you're not careful, you're gonna break something and like damage, do damage to something. Um, like I've hurt myself a couple of times in uh, studio sessions. One of them was actually Dragon Ball. It's not Sean Schimmel's famous Super Saiyan three scream where he passed out. <laughs> it, for me, it was an episode when Zamasu was being introduced, and it was okay. the flashback with the cavemen, the, you know, the yeah. dinosaur cavemen. Yeah, yeah. I was the caveman dinosaur that Zamasu killed, and I had to let out this guttural, blood murderous scream. I did it. And I felt something pop and bulge out of my trachea. Mm -hmm. And I can still kind of mess around with it. It's like a button, like a toggle switch to this day. So I've learned switch. Yeah. So (laughs) I've learned how to be careful. I've yeah, I've hurt myself with that video game. I've hurt myself with Dragon Ball. So that's another like merit badge on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, (laughs) you know, I've heard horror stories, Um, you know, uh, one of my closest friends and my mentor this guy was my mentor, my Obi-Wan. You might have heard of him, <laughs> Brad Venable. Brad um, Venable. Yeah, he unfortunately recently passed away in January. Um, and my condolences. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Brad, yeah, sure. Brad, sure. Brad has been in like, okay, here's an easy one. Um, you know Resurrection F? You know the big yeah. red Shishami? Yes. That was Brad. Brad was also wow. a griffin. In Devil May Cry Five, he was the bird, mm-hmm. the oh, Raven. Yeah. Right now, I'm yeah, looking at he, he, Brad is a wonderful human being that I've had the privilege to know for six years, and Brad has told me stories about the injuries and like he taught me a lot of things to look out for. You know, careful not to do this, don't do that. You mm-hmm. know, stay hydrated, warm yep. up, because he's he's nearly lost his career because he's damaged his voice when he had to do world of warcraft when he had to do like orcs and stuff right brad taught us a lot and i wanted to bring up brad because brad not only taught us about how to take care of ourselves and our instrument he also gave off this presence and he inspired me to really go out of the way to treat everyone with the utmost respect like 
it's like we like to talk about ourselves obviously we're yeah. people but i also i like to take the extra mile and try to talk and reach out to people you know especially with like with you guys i like to know about you like you know ben you talk about how you do wrestling and you know uh d you talk about you you collect swordsman stuff and trav i see some really cool memorabilia behind you ninja turtles and all that and i like mm -hmm. to know more it's like let me know more about you i'll happily tell you about myself but i want to be equal exchange in the conversation you know that's why when i go to sessions i try to learn the engineer's name what they're doing you know like you know one of the engineers i know matt grounds you know i i added him on facebook it's like hey dude has the ink because he gets tattoos and stuff i'm like is that new ink or did you get it touched up i go out of my way to treat everyone with so much respect and to show genuine interest in who they are because you know i it's i don't like that that textbook hollywood you know snobby stuff it's like no it's like we're here to work you you that's like it's the engineer's job to make sure i sound good and deliver a good product and they're wizards mm -hmm. i've done i've done some audio engineering myself and these guys are wizards you know it's it's one yeah, thing absolutely. to like show respect to the director or the writer or whatever but it's also good to show respect to the engineers or the the the, the front desk associate or anything like that treat everyone with as, with as much respect and people are going to remember that again that's how I that's how I've gotten most of my gigs because I go out of my way and Brad has taught me this to treat everyone with the utmost respect because he had this mentality of a rising tide raises all ships. He hated he hated the competition aspect of this industry. And that's what I try to do as well. Um nice. Brad Brad has taught us all so much and you know I'm trying to pay it forward by passing on the stuff he taught me to right. everyone else especially in in these crazy times yeah, not just this industry not even just uh, this yeah. industry these times are insane yeah. you know like it's okay to like you know check out uh check people hey how you doing you holding up okay or showing interest in people like don't overexert yourself obviously but that little extra like you doing okay how's it going you know mm -hmm. it's like how's yep. the family or whatever it goes a long way these days i 100 mm -hmm. agree with you man like one thing that i would always do after a wrestling event um mm -hmm. you know i would always thank everybody in the building like the the person at the concession stand the mm -hmm. person at the ticket booths because it's just like they're just as big and just as important as the guys who are wrestling in the ring because if, if they're not there then who's gonna do it you know what i'm saying and they keep everything I mean, running exactly they keep mm -hmm. everything running i mean like even uh i want to say it was last week i had went to wawa and there was this lady in front of me and the cashier she had asked her she was just like would you like your receipt and the lady was just like yeah i want my receipt and like she just said it so rude and when i when i walked up to her she was just like i just don't understand like how people can be like that i just mm -hmm. asked a question and i was just like you know some people it's just like they just weren't raised right you know what i'm saying it's like you should never mm -hmm. be rude to mm -hmm. anyone because it's just like you never know what somebody's going through you never know uh you know if they're having a bad time at home so it's like you should always treat people with kindness and respect because mm -hmm. like how you just said just asking hey are you doing okay how's your day it's mm -hmm. like that goes a long way the little things it, man it shows mm -hmm. that it's just like you know that you actually care mm -hmm. by just saying that it's just like you don't know how much that means to me that you know somebody's telling me that everything is going to be all right so that's really cool that you know he was that type of person and like that he was a good human being and like mm -hmm. that's what we need more in this world are like good human beings because it's I like agree. we all go we all go through stuff and yeah. I also I also wanted to mention too um when you were talking about him I looked him up and I looked mm -hmm. up his uh, IMDB and my I don't know if you had saw my face but my eyes got real wide because he voiced Anubis on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and mm -hmm. these guys up here and all of our listeners and viewers they know that I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure but and it's not his top 5 and not his top 10 it's, it's his number top 7, five. <laughs> number seven. Well, I'm not going to let him off the hook it's right number now. 7 it's in my top 10 but it's like Anubis was such a interesting character because a uh, spoiler alert he was just a sword and yeah. and he did an awesome job like i remember uh when when he uh dies in the show mm -hmm. uh because he gets stuck on a cow and it was just so funny and uh you know just that role so i mean like the story that you just told about him man he sounded like a very incredible guy and it goes a long way when it's uh when you know he can pass on you know stuff to other people just mm -hmm. by you know just being a decent human being yeah, yeah.
pinkies up the brand. Exactly. You know? And I mean, again, this is what we always talk about on this podcast. Um, I've said it before. It's not that I feel like most most fans don't really care about your career and your credentials. Mm -hmm. They just care about who you are. Like they want to get to know more about you, what mm -hmm. you got in the glass case behind you, what mm -hmm. you know, what games you're collecting, what games you're playing. Yeah, because anytime you're in the whether it's like a music artist or a sports player or something, when you find out that they also like something that's not related to that. Mm -hmm. that you enjoy mm -hmm. it's like a different kind of connection you got mm -hmm. with them yeah and that's the same with just other other actors mm -hmm. you know that's why uh, you know like i said the reason uh like you know me uh rico fiardo kyle phillips and you know everyone that we bonded over magic right. magic the gathering an old card game that's still going strong like or like my buddy Travis, we both love Godzilla. You know, we right. were in we were in the Shin Godzilla dub. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Nice. that that was a big childhood dream come true as well. You know, because like our career is not our lives. You know, right. it's our craft is a big part of our life, but it's not everything around it. You know, like like I I mentioned at some point, I like cooking. I do art. I write. You know, I stream on Twitch. If I'm not auditioning or whatever i'm streaming like final fantasy 14 on twitch with my guild or i'm streaming monster hunter rise or something you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, nice. I'm a person with interests and hobbies and that's that's something that you're right it's another type of connection that's something we all actually like um i actually one thing i've talked to uh with some of the la people i know is that and i've learned this is i got to meet some pretty pretty big names in a very casual setting because i tend to go to la for like birthday parties or whatever just to see friends and when we're not talking about work mm -hmm. that's when it's just like <sighs> finally we're not right. talking about work we're talking about our interest uh, interests like uh, we're at a karaoke like let's say we're at we're in like little tokyo and we're at a karaoke karaoke bar we don't want to talk about work exactly you know, we, we mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about like music or like let's say someone brought in like a like a local beer or something we talk about like ipas or something or you know or like hey like you know an easy example i can pull uh out of the ether is my friend jeff Bicente, who's a audio engineer in los angeles he's worked on a lot of on, on a lot of shows we bonded over food right. like that's we, easy one. we share food porn with each other all right yeah like <laughs> especially especially because we we like jeff is also a power lifter Mm -hmm. like it's crazy he dresses up like occasionally dresses up as moana uh maui from moana nice you know he does, do, does he do the singing too does the singing he even rocked the big fish hook nice, oh, yeah. you know? nice. <laughs> and, and yeah. dwayne johnson got some competition out there exactly <laughs> you know and like we bond over music because he's also a musician we bond over music we bond over food whenever we and we will go He's in California. I'm here in Texas. I will be up till three o'clock in the morning, which is like 1 a.m. for him. We will just, just talk about food, music, just us venting our frustrations of the industry. Because we're 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 two sides of the coin. He's the engineer, right, yeah. I'm the talent. So yeah. we we're human. You know, it kind of goes back to the whole, you know, careful what you say, treat everyone with respect. Yeah we're human it's not good to hold in these frustrations and anger but that's why you need to create a healthy safe venting environment don't just right. blurt out your anger and frustration <laughs> on social media exactly <laughs> yeah. Ex oh my god yeah it's like brian i can't tell you how many times it's like i've told somebody that's that's young in the business i'm just like hey if you have a problem with somebody don't say it online like actually mm -hmm. talk to that person or don't say anything at all. Exactly. So many people that will go on Facebook, go on Twitter and be like, yep. yeah, this guy sucks in the ring. And it's just like, <clears> okay, <throat> like that's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Like, yeah. you should have said that. And because again, I get it. We're human, especially like in our industry. Or again, we're performers. You know, Ben, right. you wrestle and, and, you know, I act and we bear our soul to the audience we are a, an emotional bunch we're mm -hmm. sensitive you know we may not look it but we are a sensitive bunch and we're going to have moments of frustration or moments of anger or mm -hmm. we're going to end up working with someone we, we just because like there are going to be people you just don't like right. yeah, you know absolutely it yeah. happens you know there are people i just don't like but i treat them with, with respect i've come it's like you know what we're not going to click whatever we'll just shake hands we'll nod we'll do the job move on and that's it yep mm -hmm. exactly 
And when you have these frustrations or, you know, obviously it's not good to bottle it up, but some, you know, there are proper channels to vent these frustrations, you know, like it, let's say you're just, again, if you're having frustrations, just talk to a friend, keep it private, you know, mm -hmm. just don't make it public. Yep. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, there's proper, just like with a job, when you have issues with a job, who do you go to? HR. Yep. Mm -hmm. You go to HR. HR. So every there, there's an HR uh, venue right, right, for yeah. every industry. There's an yep. a, there's an HR uh, thing for everything, you know, because like it's it's OK to like kind of have your rant sessions with friends when it's private. And it's like because like it's like, look, I'm just venting. I'm frustrated. Right. This is no personal beef with anyone. I just need to get this emotion out there, you know. But yeah, don't don't put it out there because like I, it's that that really annoying disney ride is correct yep. it's a small world after all yeah uh, yeah, yeah you're right man. and and it's one of those things too where it's like uh because like me and you we work in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and it's just like i've always been one of those people where it's just like fans they don't need to know what goes on behind closed doors because yeah. it's like this is something that we need to handle behind the curtain and mm -hmm. it's the same thing like with voice acting it's just like if you have an issue or something you don't want to put it out there because it's just like it's not for fans to see like they don't yeah. understand that because at the end of the day they're fans it's just like all like all they do they watch me wrestle they listen to you talk that's all that they're supposed to know they're not supposed yeah. to know that you hate this person or uh it's just like you don't like this person and stuff like that because it's like now they're forming their own opinions and it's just like at the end of the day their opinions don't even matter but because we live in a world where it's a uh, you know first come first serve where it's just like well if i put this out there i'll get clicks and it's like now this blows up and like it might it might be something as simple as uh i didn't like the shoes that he was wearing and it's just like now because it's out there in the ether and people yep. have formed their opinions that's when the rumors start and whatnot and it's a bunch of stuff that's not even true then you have to do damage control and in the long run it's it's a pain in the ass yeah and you know? it can be it can be a pr it can be a pr nightmare yep. you know and i've i've seen my fair share of pr nightmares that out of respect for parties involved i will not divulge but i've seen it and it's a lot of the times it can be stuff that can be easily avoided if you just yep. right. it privately, absolutely you know and like you said uh, first come, first serve, uh, you know, be the first one to put it out there, get the clicks. But it's also, you know, this is my personal opinion. I got to preface that. I kind of see social media as a double-edged sword, you I know, say that all the time. because it's great that we can, you know, reach out and meet people and communicate with people, you know, but the way I see it, and again, it's my own personal opinion, it has kind of diminished the attention span yeah you know because everyone wants that instant satisfaction the instant dopamine you know that's why those really like gnarly shady commercials that especially like you know they talk about it's like you know we stand here looking at numbers looking for validation we uh -huh. watch likes we watch and uh -huh. it's it's it, they put they put in that rod serling tone but it's true yeah. You know, I've been guilty of it. I've subconsciously gone through Twitter and like, man, no one likes the thing I said or whatever. But, you know, there is a cost to interconnectivity. Yep. You know, there's benefits to it and there's uh, detriments to it. Like I said, everyone is now connected to each other. Like D said, bad news travels fast. You know, there's right. pros and cons to it. Yep. Right. But yeah, that's just uh, kind of how it is. The nature of the beast. Exactly. Right. So uh, I think hey, thanks for coming to our TED talk today. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, I feel so a lot mean? better about myself. Yeah. Hey, did y'all have anything else that y'all wanted to say before we go in and wrap this thing up? Uh, not uh, really a question, but yeah, I, I definitely want to yeah. say what I really loved about how this conversation went because I mean I think people know this by now. Outside of what's your origin story. We do not come in here with questions that we want to ask. We just let the conversation go where the conversation goes. Yep. Thank you, and Traff. The fact that, you know, we're just four dudes sitting here BSing. All wearing glasses. Oh, I'm yeah. a dude. He's exactly. a dude. She's a dude. She's a dude. Because uh -huh. we're, we're all dudes. All dudes hey. hey. And, you know, like I said, we're all human beings. We all got feelings. We all get emotional. Mm -hmm. And it's nice when people could come in, sit down listen to us talk and relate to it and say yeah, yeah. 
I feel that same way too. Redemption. Yeah, I like Redemption. these guys. <laughs> Redemption. Hey, hey, I was telling Brian earlier that um before like off the pod that it's just like a lot of times we have guests that come up here and it's like so I I take it that it's just like when they come up here they don't know who we are and mm -hmm. they think that it's going to be like just straight questions asking about their career and anime and everything but up here we like having conversations with people it's just like before before d and trav showed up like me and brian we were just showing our collections showing uh video games that we have and just talking about video games talking about falcon and winter soldier mm -hmm. talking about uh wandavision and like that's that's just who we are up here on leveling up with benjamin banks we're not like your typical podcast we're gonna uh we're like Kick Olive Garden. It. We're all family here. That's what we yeah. are here on leveling up with Benjamin Banks. Um one other thing that I wanted to mention before we wrap this up was earlier in the interview, you had mentioned uh Morgan Berry. Now we're gonna be having her up here on the podcast sometime in the future. And it's cool that you told that story. Mm -hmm. So now when she comes up here, we were like, Yeah, we have Brian on and you know, he mentioned this story and like, and we know, can say, we... tell us how you really feel about Brian. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you what Brian said about you. Oh. <laughs> it's it like, play you the are tape. part of his origin story. <laughs> play the uh, tape. But yeah, exactly. no, I, I just, I just wanted to say that that was, it was yeah. cool, man. And it's, yeah. it's, it's funny because it's like, we just reached out to her and, uh, you know, now she's coming on and I, I appreciate that. Like a lot of voice actors want to come up here on leveling up with Benjamin Banks because you know, for some, it's just like they've never done interviews on podcasts before. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like how you were just saying, Brian, where it's like there's more to me than just the voice. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the person behind the voice. It's just like, oh, wow. It's just like, Brian, he likes food. I like food. Uh, maybe I yeah. can go on his Twitter and ask him, like, what's his favorite dish that he likes to cook? So I'm happy that, uh, you know, in podcast <laughs> land mm -hmm. that we're able to, uh, you know, have people come up here and just talk and you know our listeners and our viewers can find out more about them so with that yeah. being said brian thank you so much for joining us up here on leveling up with benjamin banks we appreciate you coming thank on thank you for you. having me you're yeah, welcome man. hey no problem <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so uh before we let you go let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at uh, let's see. You can find me on Twitter at Live Studio Brian. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Live Studio Brian. I stream Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. Mm. Typically, mostly right now, Monster Hunter Rise or uh, yep, or Final Fantasy XIV on Tuesdays. You know, reset day. Got to do those dungeons and dailies. Uh -oh. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, you know. And hey, you can hear me in like the recent stuff I've done. Oh, dog! Um, you can hear me. You can hear me. Uh, uh, let's uh, Borderlands Three, man. Absolutely. I'm all I'm all over that game. You can find Absolutely me. Absolutely are nice. But yeah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, thank you again, uh, D. Let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. That's gonna be rebellious double underscore D twenty three Instagram dot com. D, like, Try why are you sitting there looking like a villain? Because <laughs> like, this is like you can find me. <laughs> you got the layer me. in the back? Uh -huh. it's, it's that low angle shot, you know? Uh -huh. To show dominance. I yep. guess I'll see y'all later. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you, hey, you know, <laughs> that, was that? my bad. Oh, <laughs> hey. oh dang. Hey. This guy. And that's where you can find me. Uh-oh. No, but take you know, care of this guy. Go ahead. But you know, it's uh for me, you know, it's just a one-stop shop, and that's over on the Instagrams at ZK Audio, where you can find me posting about you know the music I'm into, the music I'm working on, and uh stuff from the podcast, but right. it's just music. And if anybody is in need of a hero, good sir, where they gonna find one? You can find me your hero Benjamin Banks at King Benji underscore Banks. On Twitter and Instagram, and you can look me up on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. So make sure that uh, you continue to check out all of our stuff, our reviews that we have coming out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Like yeah. I always say, keep that pinky up and stay positive. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel podcast we got that too make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications thanks a lot to our patrons and if you don't mind join the patreon we'll be having new specials coming up soon <laughs>